Hi, this is a video on examples of heat engine cycles. And in this video, we'll look at the auto cycle. Auto cycle is an idealized version of the processes that occur in common automobile engines. Uh, let me show that to you on the Wikipedia page. This is the Wikipedia page for the auto cycle. For us, what matters is really down here. The auto cycle is constructed from, and this is the pressure volume diagram for the cycle. For us, this uh, blue and green horizontal lines don't really matter. It is important for the real functioning of the engine. That's where the fuel exhaust is expelled and new air is taken in. But for our purposes, um, what we care about is the cycle, starting from 1, 2, 3, 4, and back to 1. So from 1 to 2, that's uh, adiabatic compression. So this is where the piston compresses the fuel-air mixture. We assume it happens quickly enough that no heat is exchanged with the surrounding. And at point 2, this is the very important point. This is where the fuel-air exhaust is ignited with an electric spark. So this happens quickly enough that the volume doesn't have any time to change. So this is idealized with isochoric heating. The temperature that it reaches at point 3 is determined by something called adiabatic flame temperature of the, the fuel-air mixture. You can look it up later, or I will look it up when I do the summary video to compare all these different cycles with each other. Now, from this point 3, high pressure, low volume point, the gas expands adiabatically doing work. And this is what we sometimes call power stroke. This is the part of the engine cycle that actually does work. And once it reaches point 4, then it needs to return to the original point somehow. In a real engine, it expels the exhaust, takes in the fresh air at room temperature. We are just going to say um, that there's an idealized isochoric process that somehow takes the engine from 4 to 1. That completes the cycle, and it's ready to do the work again. So for our analysis, what's important are these processes connecting each of the steps. Adiabatic compression, isochoric heating, adiabatic expansion, and isochoric cooling. And we'll ignore all the other technical details for the time being. All right, back to our notebook. Uh, I copied the PV diagram from the Wikipedia page so that I don't have to redraw it. So we are asking the same questions as before. That is, what are the network done and the heat transfers? The result for the auto cycle will be a little bit more complicated, so I'll try to go through this quickly. Let me start by relabeling some of these points. I am going to call this A, my starting point, B, C, D. And let me label some parameters we'll be using. So the low volume, VL, that's the volume at A and B, and the high volume. VH. That's the volume at C and D. And we can see that point B is at the highest temperature. So we are going to call that TH, high temperature. It'll be important for the comparison purposes later. And we can see that D is at the lowest temperature. So we'll call the temperature at D, TL, the low temperature. The temperatures at C and A are going to be um, something in between. So we'll have to introduce a parameter for that later and then uh, from the information here kind of eliminate it. Alright, as before, let me write down all the equations that we are going to be using. The ideal gas law, the first law of thermodynamics, and for monatomic ideal gas, the internal energy, and the adiabatic relationship. All right, I want to go through this uh, kind of quickly because we've went through all these processes before. What will take more work isn't working out the work and heat exchanges initially, but it'll be the algebra we need to do to try to reduce the number of unknowns. So let me write down all the basic expressions for each of steps first. So from A to B, 
This is isochoric heating. We've done this before. No work is done. And the heat input is equal to change of the internal energy. Um, I can write this in terms of the difference in temperature, but using ideal gas law, I'm going to rewrite it in terms of pressure and volume. And later on, we'll eliminate these additional unknowns we just introduced. And one more thing, I'm labeling this as QH because that's the only place where there's a heat input to the system. All right, process B to C, that's uh, adiabatic expansion. So adiabatic means no heat transfer. And the work done is minus of the change of internal energy. Uh, let me express this one in terms of temperatures. Making sure I'm not making any sign errors. This is positive as it's supposed to be. And this TC is an additional unknown I'm introducing that we're going to have to eliminate later. Isochoric cooling from C to D. Once again, no work is done. And this is the heat exhaust, which is given by the change of internal energy. And I'm going to express that in terms of pressure and volume again. And PD and PCR, new unknowns I'm introducing that we'll eliminate later. And making sure there are no sign errors, this is negative as it's supposed to be for heat outflow from the system. All right, final step, D to A, adiabatic compression. So heat exchange is zero again. And for the work done, we look to the change of internal energy again. TA is another unknown I have to introduce. That's temperature at point A. And since it's supposed to be greater than the lowest temperature, this is negative quantity as it's supposed to be. All right, so that's uh, ostensibly everything we need, the heat transfers and the work done. But um, we've introduced one, two, three, four, five, six unknowns that we're going to have to try to get rid of. Some of these are a little bit easier to get rid of. Let me write those down first. Pressures at point B and D are easy to get rid of because I know the temperature and volume at those points. So the remainder are a little bit harder, but tackling TC and TA will be easier. So let me do that first. The approach here is to utilize the adiabatic relationship that we know. C is related to B by adiabatic process, so we can say this. Let me rewrite this in a slightly more suggestive form. I did that because when you have pressure times volume, you can relate that to the temperature directly using the ideal gas law. So we get this. At point B, the temperature is TH and the volume is VL. And I can express the temperature at point C. And at point C, volume is VH. Some things nicely cancel out. And we can solve this for TC here. And we can imagine going through a similar calculation with the TA. I'll leave it to you to do the step-by-step -step calculation. Let me write down the result here. All right, if necessary, pause and make sure that these results make sense. I'm going to erase the derivations and save these two expressions here so that we can use them in reducing the number of unknowns. All right, if you missed the derivations, you can always go back in the video and look at it again. All right, that takes care of the unknown temperatures. And now we have the tools to handle pressure at point A and pressure at point C because now we know the temperature at those points. Or if you plug in the expression for TA from our derived result, I combine the factors of VL together. And we can do the same thing for pressure at point C. All right, so this is one of those problems where there isn't much to be gained by doing extensive algebra because these expressions don't really simplify when you combine them algebraically. So I'm just going to write out the network and the heat transfers in terms of these expressions. And when we get to the summary video, I will use these expressions to work out the numerical values of these parameters and plug them into the formulas I'm going to write down right now. The network done is 
3 halves nk times th plus tl minus ta minus tc. And the heat inflow QH is 3 halves PB minus PA VL. And the heat outflow is 3 halves PD minus PC. Alright, so we'll come back to this later when we are doing the summary video. Alright, so before I go, I just want to point out one thing. This quantity here, it's not guaranteed to be positive. It comes down to a matter of picking uh, correct parameters because both the, the isochoric processes and the adiabatic processes change temperatures. So you need to make sure when you pick the parameters for this that in the adiabatic expansion, the temperature doesn't decrease so much that uh, you go below the TL that would make the whole thing nonsensical. So I'll take care of that when I do the summary video. So until then, bye.